Alright guys, in this video I'm going to do a basic overview of the entire system, going over each one of the components and why we're putting them in, and then I'll also have additional videos that'll be specific to each thing, like the speakers uh, on one video, amplifier in another video, and the stereo installation in another video. But in this video I'm going to go through and show everything from start to finish so you guys can get a general overview of how to put a complete stereo system in this truck. Alright guys, just getting ready to install this stereo system in the Chevy truck. First, I'm going to start with um, putting in the Sony radio, uh, but uh, before we do that, we've got to get the old one out. So let's go pull the old stereo out of this truck. Alright guys, so this is going to be a pretty fun project. I haven't done something like this in a long time. Uh, back in the day, I used to install car stereos for a living. so. Uh, I did that uh, full time when I was um, in my early 20s, uh, ran a car stereo store for a number of years, so uh, this is something I used to do a lot of, but haven't really done a lot of it in a long time. Alright, so we got to put uh, speakers there in the door, we're going to put uh, an amplifier underneath the seat, and um, of course we're going to get out this old Clarion car stereo here. And luckily, since I'm kind of an old school car stereo guy, I've got some of these old Clarion keys. Uh, Clarion made these unique keys. I don't know if they still do, but back in the day, this is what they used to get the radios out. It's one of the only companies that have them. You could still get the radio out without them, but this does make it a lot easier. All right, it's going to make my job a little bit easier where somebody's already cut the DIN style hole in the dash for me. So basically, these Clarion keys, you just stick them in on the side like that. They kind of click and they're, they work kind of like handles. This baby's been in here a while. Alright guys, so now it's time to wire up the radio. So what you've got to do is clean up all that wiring there and verify your powers, your grounds, your speaker wires, your antenna, make the necessary connections. Now. In the description below this video, I'll have a link that's linking to the video with complete instructions on how to test and verify all the wiring and go through and completely install this radio from the mounting all the way through all the connections needed. So make sure you check out that other video if you're interested in the complete instructions on how to install this stereo. Alright guys, let's go pull the radio out of the box and see what we've got. Okay, so you've got face plate, microphone, because this is a Bluetooth radio, you've got the microphone, you've got the wiring harness, and this is what I'm looking for right now. Alright, so we've got our harness. We just got to find some white caps. I think I have some in here. Let's see. Yep. Let's take this thing out. All right, so I prefer to use these white cap connections. They make a little bit better connection than, you know, these buck connectors do. Just because you can twist the wire together really tightly and you're only making one crimp connection with this. So grab a few of these. Okay, so the first wire we're going to start with is the constant wire. Aftermarket radios typically use this traditional color combination here. And the yellow wire is generally, on just about every single brand, the constant wire. So what the constant wire is, is the wire that basically goes directly to the battery. So that we don't have to worry about that connection shorting out on anything metal. Let's go ahead and make the connection and use 
white cap there. Okay, so one of the most important components of your audio system is actually the stereo. This particular stereo has a really nice 4 volt output for the amplifier so that we'll get really good signal to the amplifier for clean sound. Alright guys, so now that we got the radio wired up, now it's time to wire up the speakers and get them mounted in the doors. We're going to put this 6.5 inch uh, mid-bass woofer inside the door by Dom Diamond Audio. And then it has basically kind of a built-in uh, crossover on the back there that allows uh, input from the amplifier to go directly to the speaker and then an output here that goes directly to the tweeter so that we can mount the tweeter in a separate location up a little bit higher that's going to be pointed a little bit more towards the ears so that you get a little bit better high frequencies. Now you can take this center cone off this speaker and mount the tweeter on the center cone or you can do like we're, we're going to do and we're going to mount them up just a little bit higher so that you get a little bit better sound. Okay, to mount the speakers, you've got to make a template so that you can draw a circle on the door and then drill a couple holes within your template drawing there and then take some tin snips and cut out the hole. Now you can do this with a jigsaw or a reciprocating saw, but I found it easiest and it's actually a really clean cut with a set of tin snips. So basically go through and cut the hole and then test fit the speaker to make sure it fits correctly and then go through and wire it up. Alright guys, so we got the mid-bass driver mounted in the door there and then we've also mounted the tweeter there, ran the wires through the door, put some split loom on uh, the wire there to keep uh, the wire protected and we've got this side all done. Alright guys, now it's time to install the amplifier. So this is an RE Audio amplifier. It's a two-channel, full-range amplifier. Now, they give it a 600 uh, peak watts. Uh, I highly doubt it's actually running 600 watts. It's probably closer to 300, which is about 150 watts per channel, uh, which is more than enough power for the uh, speakers that we're going to be running. But we'll be able to keep the amplifier gain way down uh, with having a lot more power to the speakers we can keep the gain down and that'll keep noise out of the system and give us a really good low distortion out of the Diamond Audio speakers. Alright guys, so we're going to remove the seat in order to install the amplifier underneath the seat. When removing seats, it's typically easiest to do it with an air rack. You just want to be careful when doing this that you don't damage your hand and bump it into something. <laughs> Alright guys, so I've got the amplifier kit here, and this is the power cable that I've got to run directly from the battery into the cab of the truck and directly to the amplifier. The amplifier kit comes with this little fuse holder that we're going to mount into the engine compartment as well. So the first thing that you need to do to get the power from the battery to the amplifier, this cable here is what's going to supply all the main juice to the amplifier. What you have to do is hook it directly to the positive battery terminal and then put the fuse somewhere between here and roughly a foot away from the battery is okay. And then we've got to run the power cable through and inside the cab here. Now there's not a hole or anything on this side to put the power cable through so you've got to find a safe spot in order to drill the hole through the firewall. Okay, so once you've located a safe spot to drill, go ahead and start drilling through the firewall. All right guys, so I've got the power cable ran back to the amplifier location. I've left the fuse out of it. That way the power stops here, it doesn't go through the wire uh, so that we don't short it out on anything or pop the fuse. I'm leaving that out until the final connection is made. So inside the cab, I have the wires ran underneath the carpet. So of course you've got your RCA cables which run the audio signal from the stereo down to the amplifier. And then I've got the speaker wires here. This darker gray is the left and then the blue one is the right. And I have my ground cable made there the remote turn on so the amplifier turns on and off with the radio and then the main power cable from the battery 
uh, ran in there. All right, guys. So the most important thing to an audio system is the amplifier. Make sure you don't skimp on the amplifier. Get a very good quality amplifier and get a nice install kit so that you get a really good install. The biggest thing to get very good sound is a really good installation of the amplifier and pick out a real high quality amp. All right guys, so we got the amplifier all mounted and installed. We've got the wiring hooked up, uh, speaker wires, power cables, and the RCA cables. Now I've got it screwed down to the floor. Now just take these little end caps and install them. They just screw on there. They're really just to kind of make the install look a little bit pretty. All right guys, this was a really fun install. Great project and the sound turned out great. Really impressed with the bass that we've got out of those six and a half there in the door. They've got a ton of bass out of those things. Now the owner of the truck put some Dynamat material inside the door so they don't rattle and it gives a better, cleaner, lower bass note. Turned out really, really good. And then where we mounted the tweeters really, really give a great sound for the passenger and the driver. Directs all the high frequencies directly to the ears and they don't get blocked by your feet or knees or anything. So we get a great sound out of the system. He's got the Bluetooth in there so he can sync it to his phone. And overall, really, really good sound. Super impressed with this install. Highly recommend this amplifier here and the Diamond Audio speakers. They really sound good. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more installs, more do-it-yourself projects of all types. I do projects around the house, car repairs, installing tile, you name it. I do every type of do-it-yourself project you can think of. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel regularly. I upload videos every Saturday. All right guys, so make sure you check out the other videos on the install in this truck. I've got a lot more in-depth details with complete instructions on installing the stereo, the speakers, and the amplifier in separate videos. Now, as these videos become available, I will upload them to YouTube. So if they're not there yet, they'll be there soon. So keep checking back to DIY Bry. Guys, make sure you like the video if you liked it and keep doing those do-it-yourself projects.